Father, we count it a privilege as your children to come before you this morning just telling you how much we love you, Lord, and how much we're in awe of you, Father, the things that you're doing, the things that you've created, Lord, even our bodies, Father, are fearfully and wonderfully made, and we rejoice in that, Lord, and we rejoice in our Savior, Jesus Christ, and we rejoice that you've created another day just for us, Lord, special, and have uh, handpicked us to be here for such a time as this and have a beautiful, perfect plan for our lives, Lord, a plan with, with no error at all, Lord, and, uh, and created in perfection. And we praise you for that, Lord. We ask that thy will be done on this day, Lord. Come to Junction and just uh, do what you will, Father. Change lives, change hearts, Lord, and draw mankind closer to Jesus Christ. Father, we just uh, pray that you come and be a part of our service here today. Let everything we do uh, be an honor and glory to you, and may you be pleased. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lewis. You know, it, it never fails any time I get up and speak on the behalf of the Lord. Uh, I always have this, I don't know. If I was a, a track star getting ready to get out of the gate, waiting on that gun to sound, I think that same feeling would be inside my belly. We're going to be reading now the book of John this morning. Chapter 21. We'll just start there in the first verse. It said, After these things, Jesus showed himself again to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And in this way he showed himself. Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples were together. Now, I wondered a little bit about those two others this morning as I was reading through this. Couldn't think maybe they promised their boys that next time that they got ready to go fishing they could go with them and they didn't they didn't want their names written down because they, they they were invited or perhaps the, the wife didn't know where they were at where they went fishing so they left their names off but anyway two of them go unnamed of course it also leaves room for you to put your name in there. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. And they said to him, we're going with you also. They went out immediately and got into the boat, and that night they caught nothing. I've been there. See, Beth knows I have testified before. I fished all night, and we didn't catch anything. But when morning now came, Jesus stood at the shore, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said to them, Children, have you any food? And they answered to him, No. He said to them, Cast your net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast, and now they were not able to draw in uh, the net because of the multitude of fish. Therefore the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put, he put on his outer garment and plunged into the sea. But the other disciples came in the little boat, for they were not far from the land, about 200 cubits, dragging the net with fish. As soon as they had come to the land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some fish with you you have just caught. Simon Peter went up and dragged the net to the land, full of large fish, 153, and although the, there were so many, the net was not broken. Jesus said to them, Come and eat breakfast. Yet none of these disciples dared ask him, Who are you, knowing that it was the Lord? Then Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them, and likewise the fish. This is now the third time Jesus had showed himself to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. 
He's, the Lord said to him, Feed my lambs. He said to him again, the second time, Simon and son of Jonah, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved, grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? He said to him, Lord, you know all things and you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Most assuredly, I say to you, when you were younger, you girded yourself and walked where you wished. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hand. And another will gird you and carry you where you do not wish. He spoke signifying by what death he would glorify God. When he spoke this, he said to him, follow me. I've heard this scripture preached many times, several times in the realm of the three words used for love when Jesus was talking to uh, Peter, phileo and agape. And anyway, um, I really want to focus in on feeding the lambs, feeding the sheep, and tending the sheep, tending the flock. You know, this morning there will be thousands of people gathering this morning in houses of the Lord. And many will fall into the category of those that are, are being fed, those that are doing the feeding, those that, uh, as my sister shared with me this morning, she baked a dish, they're having a, a, a going away so to speak, uh, for someone this morning. They're, they're going to enjoy a great meal. You know, when Jesus uh, hooked up with uh, the woman at the well in Samaria, he had sent his disciples off to go get some food. And when they returned, uh, having gone to town in Samaria, Jesus told them, he said, my food is to do the will of my Father. I believe it's in John 4. There's something else he said. I don't want to leave it out. Hold on. Here it goes. Jesus said to him, I have food which you do not know. <clears throat> My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. I submit to you this morning that although the physical food and even the food that Jesus prepared for the disciples that was that was on the coals when they got to the bank is important. You know, there's a, a old cliche that it says that the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. And you know, this frame of two hundred and two pounds nowadays is is uh, evident that I like food. But, but more than that, more important than, than natural sustenance is spiritual sustenance. And uh, the feeding of the lambs, the tending of the sheep, the feeding of the sheep <coughs> was, was the last encounter that Peter had with the Lord, say Pentecost. It was the last encounter, the last time that Jesus appeared to him. We have a responsibility as believers, as followers of Christ to be not only feeding our spirits, not only being attendants at church in the mornings on Sunday morning, not only being in uh, intense study of the Bible and the Word of God, and not only being involved intensely with the ministry of encounters such as Jesus had with the woman at the well who did not know the living, risen Savior. After he had that encounter with the Samaritan woman and he talks to these, these men that tells them that uh, he has 
food that they don't they don't understand. He says, look, the field is ripe with the harvest. We have uh, not to look very far into the what's going on in our world to know that the field is ripe. Oh my goodness. There's so much going on. The times that we live in are so volatile and just chaotic. It's the, every, every, every soul is looking for peace. This Jesus that I speak of is the answer to that question. This Jesus that I speak of is the sustenance that's going to keep us going in the midst of a chaotic world. This Jesus is the sustenance that keeps us going even though Jesus prophesies a Peter and says, your hands will be tied and he's telling him the way he's going to die. But he says, follow me. This Jesus that everyone he touched and encountered was, was a, a spiritual touch but yet at the cross there was but a few who got it who ate from the bread of life that had understanding of who Jesus Christ, the Son of God, truly was and is. This sustenance that I'm talking about has the ability to, to implant life in your soul. To, to bring you to an understanding that beyond this world and all that it exists and all that you see is a kingdom that's coming. <laughs> Whoa. I tell you, today, the bread of life is prepared before you on a banqueting table. And Jesus says, come and dine. Come and eat of my body, which was broken for you. And I'm telling you, even now, the Many will misunderstand what I'm talking about. They'll think I'm talking about a loaf of bread. And drink it from a cup that's got juice in it. Or wine, depending on what church you go to. But I'm talking about eating the body of Christ. And drinking the blood of Christ. I'm talking about sustenance, spiritual sustenance that comes and resides and lives in you. To give you life. I present to you the gospel that God himself so loved you <coughs> and so desired a relationship with you knowing your destiny knowing that you were headed to a place you weren't created for he himself came and provided a sacrifice for atonement to, to an offering for you to join him in heaven an offering for you to be one of the lamb, one of the sheep, perhaps be even being called to be one that tends and feeds the sheep and the lambs. Perhaps you be the one that lays your hands on someone and they be healed. Perhaps you be the one that speaks a word that's attached with the Holy Spirit that speaks life into a a vessel that's broken or needs words of encouragement. Perhaps you'd be the one to lead someone into the salvation road that says, Lord, come into my heart and be my Savior. I am a sinner and I know it and I need you. I believe you're the Son of God. I believe eat of that bread, eat of that manna from heaven. When Jesus himself said, pray these words, he says, pray my kingdom come. I want, that, I want that to go off in your spirit. I want, I want something inside of you to stir up to say, what does that mean for the kingdom to come? What that means is that Jesus comes and resides in your heart. You know, Jesus himself said, you will do greater things than me. That blows me away. When I read about the miracles and the astonishing things that Jesus Christ did, but I'm reminded of Jesus' words where he said, it's better for you that I go. It's better for you that I hang on the cross. 
It's better for you because the Holy Spirit will come and bring life. <coughs> It's better. It's better when you gain an understanding that all this world has to offer is nothing. Because everything in this world that you see, touch, is perishing. But inside of you is a spirit and a soul. And in between that spirit and that soul is a great chasm, a gulf, and an encounter with Christ himself <coughs> plans the kingdom in your life and bring those together. And a war takes place in your members between your soul and your spirit. A war takes place because your soul, your flesh, your emotions, and your mind, and your will, and these things are still wanting to be in control. But the kingdom of heaven, this, this greater thing that's in you, <laughs> oh my goodness, life itself, eternity comes to dwell in you. And we have an option. We have a choice to choose. You know, the, the realities of, of uh, who God is and His greatness and His majesty and the way He created us to have the ability to make a choice and to choose. You know, even from the days of old when He told Joshua, He said, Before I, uh, this day I lay before you blessing, curse, life, and death. Choose. Right? We still have that choice. The testimony, the gospel of Jesus Christ is a lie. And I pray this morning that it's resounding in your heart. And I pray this morning that, that you're hearing the sound of the Spirit of the living God calling you to a higher place. I don't care where you're at with the Lord, you have not arrived. For I have read some of the what's the Trying to think of the right word, the the patriarchs, the, the you know the the kings and princes of the of the gospel in the scriptures, and not one of them had arrived to perfection. There are levels in maturity that you have to grow in Christ, and many of you are still drinking milk when you ought to be eating meat, and many of you think you're meat eaters and don't even know what milk tastes like. <laughs> okay. I'm getting off track. Lord, bring us in. Let your spirit, Lord, permeate the atmosphere. Let, Lord, your spirit rule and reign over thoughts. Even now, Lord, the walls that are being built up to, to disallow, Lord, the spirit of the living God to penetrate. Lord, I pray that you would release heaven on this earth, Lord, in manifest way this morning. I pray, Lord, that the flock, Lord, be stirred. That, that the blating, Lord, of the body of Christ would, would ring throughout the atmosphere, Lord, and people would be fed. And your kingdom, Lord, be increased. I speak, Lord, that the anointing of the Holy Ghost be released over those, Lord, that would be feeding and tending your flock this morning. I pray, Lord, for the lambs, Lord, that are so vulnerable and in a place, Lord, of seeking. I pray, Lord, they get answers this morning. I pray that the Spirit of the living God will reside, Lord, in their hearts and their minds. I pray, Lord, for the schemes and walls of the devil that have been released over their lives, Lord, be broken in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, that you would blow through, Lord the atmosphere as you did in the day of Pentecost. That many, Lord, would run to hear the sound of the wind. Yes. That you, Lord, would rise up a spokesman, Lord, to speak. 
that touch the hearts and lives, Lord, of the lost and the dying. That, Lord, manna will be released from heaven to feed, Lord, the needs and the desires. I pray, Lord, for those wrestling with the soul, Lord, in, in addictive behaviors. I pray, Lord, those that are wrestling in the soul, Lord, for food and sustenance, Lord, of this world that would override, Lord, the need and sustenance in their soul and their spirit. I break, Lord, the, the tenacity of this world, Lord, to come into our lives and take over and rule and reign over our hearts. And I break, Lord, the ability of the darkness, Lord, to even penetrate, Lord, the soul and the spirit. The light, Lord, would reside and rule and reign over our hearts and minds. And, Lord, that you would be glorified in the midst. I lift up, Lord, the kingdom of heaven. And I pray, Lord, today that you would reveal yourself in powerful, powerful, powerful ways. Grant it, Lord. You know, the, the word says that the, the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. There's probably not a person in this room who couldn't stand up and give testimony of the Lord in their lives. That they've been rescued from the dying. That eternity awaits for them at a banqueting table be above our comprehension. Amen. There's a day and an hour coming. And I don't know if it's 2012 or 2024 or if it's tomorrow. But Jesus Christ himself says that day is reserved for the Father. Amen. He himself wasn't privy to when that day would come. And I've read the scriptures in Revelation. And I know that deep darkness is covering the earth. And there was a conversation going on here this morning about knowledge and its increase. And it's in the scriptures. It talks about it. And we have almost outsmarted ourselves for thinking that, that we know about the things of this of the of how creation works and all that God does. We're getting pretty smart. I actually made myself not watch it. There was a there was a little title on a television I was in front of the other day and it said uh, the My mysteries of the Bible uh, revealed. And I was, I just almost laughed, you know, it's like, okay, so you got all the answers to the mysteries of the Bible. We just, we don't have a clue. Right. We really, truly, the, the more we know, the more knowledge that is out there, the smarter we get, we find out just how much we don't know. There are generations and generations and generations of men and women that, that you can go back to the scriptures 6,000 plus years to now. There are generations of God revealing himself and prophesied thousands of years before Christ came how he would come, when he would come, what would happen when he'd come. And he told these things he told these things so that you would have confirmation so that the doubt and the things in your mind one scripture that I wanted to back up on in, in uh, John there was the chapter before in 23 in verse 30 it says and truly, truly Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in His name. You see this book that we read, it's just a glimpse. It's just a piece.
peace. I think there's, I'd have to go find the scripture, but there, I believe it's in the, the back of Revelation that says that, you know, a library couldn't hold all the books that had to be written. We, we know in part, scripture says, we prophesy in part, the scripture says, but there's a day coming. Oh my goodness, there's a day coming when Jesus Christ himself, we're going to see him in his glory and his fullness. And every knee and every tongue will confess, I'm telling you. I pray you choose this morning to choose blessing. I pray this morning that you'll choose life. Because it's coming. Jesus is coming. That day is coming. And it'll be too late. All this that the prophets have read about, you know, and all the prophets have foretold, those things are coming true. And there's, there's one yet to come. And the Father knows that day. And it's only by His mercy He hasn't already come. And praise God, He didn't come before I got to know who Jesus was. Please join me in prayer. Jake, you want to come close us in prayer? Um, <clears throat> I would encourage all of you, either watching this or in the radio audience, who may not know who Jesus is, and who want to know him as their problem, to, 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 who, and who want to know him as the Savior of their life, to join you now. Dear God, I just thank you for this day and I thank you for the message that my brother, Mr. Darrell, gave. I ask that you please uh, just come into our lives today, Jesus. Just, I, we're, I'm sorry for what I did, Jesus, and for all the sins, and I admit that I don't deserve your grace and your salvation, but I accept you because you love me and you want me to. I ask that you please send your holy presence 